the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. Good evening, everybody. And welcome this evening to this Mass of the Lord's Supper, the day we remember principally three very important things regarding our Catholic faith. The first, the institution of the Eucharist. Secondly, the new commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples and to us during the narrative of the Last Supper. I give you a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. And then thirdly, the institution of the priesthood. Jesus called the Twelve to follow in his footsteps in a special way. Those are the three things that we're celebrating this evening. And we do it with solemnity. After the Mass, there won't be a final blessing, as there usually is. There'll be a small procession, and the Blessed Sacrament will be reserved for private adoration until 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, when we will celebrate the service of the Lord's Passion. It's the only day tomorrow when there is no Mass in the whole of the world. Good Friday is the day that no Mass is celebrated. We'll say why tomorrow. So let us begin our Mass entering into the Triduum, Maundy or Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, concluding with the resurrection of the Vigil and on Easter Sunday. Let's ask the Lord to help us to, during these three days to enter more deeply into the mystery of Christ so that we can follow him more, more faithfully once we celebrate the resurrection. Each year we should grow in our understanding. There shouldn't be an Easter that passes that we don't understand a little bit more. So let us begin by acknowledging to God and to one another that we're sinners seeking forgiveness. Let's just pause for a moment, ask the Lord to heal our wounds and embrace us with his compassion and with his mercy. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Christ, Christ, Yeah. <laughs> 
stop. Keep going. in the Let us pray. We remember, especially at this Mass this evening, the repose of the souls of Mary Bernadette Healy, Marcial and Dorcas de Colsey, and John and Christian Christine Matthias, that they rest in peace. And we also ask for the good health of Leslie Vass. O oh God, who have called us to participate in, those, in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first of all the others for you. The first month of, our, of your year, speak to the whole community of Israel and say, on the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house. 
as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each, what each can eat in deciding, number, is in deciding the number for the animal. It must be what an animal with, without blemish, a male, one year old. You may take it from either, either sheep or goats. You must keep it until the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two, two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the, and the lintel of the houses where, the, where it is eaten. That night, the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a grip, girdle around your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honor of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike. And I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to, the, to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over to you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honor. For all generations, you, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord. 
and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. I give you the new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory it was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter. You shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, Not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me master and Lord, and rightly, so I am. If I then, the Lord and master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we've just listened to part of John's account of the Last Supper. Only a part, a small part. And it doesn't mention the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the mystery of the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. The other three Gospels do. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they all tell us what happened with the bread and the wine. Also, 
We heard in the reading that Lena read for us that St. Paul, too, writes what happened at the Last Supper. Though he wasn't there, he was told. He wrote it down. John, the gospel we've just read, he actually dedicates five chapters to what happened at the Last Supper. 13 to 17, including 17, all of it. And in no moment does he say that Jesus took bread, said, this is my body, and Jesus took a cup of wine and said, this is my blood. And yet every single Holy Thursday, the day we especially remember the institution of the Eucharist, like we said at the beginning of Mass, one of the things we remember and celebrate today, this is the gospel that is chosen and read in the whole world. Why is that? If it's the only one that actually doesn't mention the mystery of the body and blood, the bread and wine, the Eucharist. It's not that John's gospel doesn't mention the Eucharist, it does. John actually dedicates the whole of chapter 6 to explaining the Eucharist. But when it comes to the Last Supper, doesn't mention it. What he does do is tell us something that nobody else does. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not even Paul. What John tells us is that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And that's what we've just heard. One reason many say that he probably excluded the institution of the Eucharist is that, well, when he wrote his gospel, he was an old man as far as we know. And the young Christian communities were already celebrating the Eucharist. And they were doing that regularly. St. Paul's account, as well as the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were well known by then, by the time John began to write his Gospel. So he probably thought, I don't need to write about that. But what John does in telling us about the washing of the feet, and many other things, actually, if you read those five chapters of John's Gospel, he helps us understand more deeply the mystery of the Eucharist and how it should influence our lives as followers of Jesus. That's what John's Gospel does. The washing of the feet is a very powerful gesture. In the Mediterranean, I'm sure many of you have been there or have been or lived in or come from countries very similar to the Mediterranean where Jesus lived. It's quite hot. People have the custom of going around in sandals or bare feet. Feet get dirty. Washing of feet is like a regular thing. When I was in the Amazon, you'd be in the river and out of the water day in and day out. You'd be washing your feet all the time. Yeah, putting them in the water, giving them a shake. It was a regular thing like eating or washing hands. Obviously, most people would wash their own feet. But slaves would wash their master's feet. And it was considered one of the lowliest, most humiliating and humble tasks. The gesture of Jesus is a bit lost on us because we don't really get that nuance. There were no slaves who washed their master's feet in our reality, in our, in our society, in our world today. So Jesus takes on this task of a slave and in doing so explains with a visible gesture what the Eucharist means. What the Eucharist means. He isn't saying that he is a slave to his disciples, nor is he saying that his, slave, that his disciples should be slaves to one another. No, he's not saying that. It's St. Paul actually that helps us understand when he describes with a Greek word, Jesus's becoming man, Jesus's incarnation, the second person of the Blessed Trinity becoming a human being. He uses a verb, a Greek verb, kenosis, kenosis, which means to empty. And in the context that Paul wrote, the word is ekenosum, meaning he emptied himself, emptied himself. 
He became a human being, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, that existed since forever as the second person of the Blessed Trinity, becomes a human being. To do that, he emptied himself. And he took on the form of a slave. He took on the form of a slave. That's what Jesus did. Paul is referring to Jesus' condition, becoming a man with a limited human nature. He's God, but he became a human being with everything that that entails, apart from sin. We hear in the Gospels and in other accounts how Jesus continually gave himself in humble service every day of his public life. And then we hear today in particular this gesture of washing feet. And then ultimately, tomorrow, we'll celebrate liturgically his willingness to be executed on a cross where he would literally, literally empty himself to the last drop of blood, a complete kenosis, a total giving, Gave everything. There was nothing left to give. His last breath, his last drop of blood. As the greatest sign of love. That's what the Eucharist means. And after washing the disciples' feet, what does he say? You should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. What's he trying to say? In other words, to empty ourselves, kenosis, to empty ourselves for each other, to serve each other, to live for each other, to help each other, to use our gifts that God has given us for the others. And so that's why in the context of this washing of the feast, washing of the feet, this first Eucharist, Jesus then gives his new commandment. It's all part of one mystery. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And how's that? By emptying ourselves. It's one of the deeper and fuller meanings of the Eucharist. You see, often as Catholics, our catechesis insists on emphasizing the real presence of the Eucharist, that God is truly present in the Eucharist, under the species of bread and wine. It's no longer bread or wine. We believe it's the body and blood of Christ. And we insist on the worthy reception of the Eucharist, adoration of the Eucharist. All of this is good, of course. But we can miss the point if this belief doesn't connect us to the way we live our lives. Of course, it's important to know what the Eucharist is. But we have to go further and understand what it actually means. What it means. Otherwise, it can remain just a ritual we go to watch on a Sunday. A pantomime. A weekly, a weekly performance we go to, but has no connection with our lives. No, it means kenosis. Emptying of self, like Christ ourselves that's what it means and if our eucharistic understanding and life doesn't get that then we haven't understood a thing so it's not about beautiful liturgies lovely music golden chalices well-made vestments the number of candles nor whether we receive the eucharist directly on our tongue on our in our hands or on our knees or whether some people prefer to go to Mass in Latin or whatever. These outward elements, they're outward elements. They can enhance or help the faith on a personal level. And they are important, but not absolutely essential. They're not absolutely essential. What is essential is kenosis, how the Eucharist connects us to life. That's why the Eucharist celebrated on a wobbly table, a wooden wobbly table, in the middle of the jungle in the Amazon, in a small hut that has holes in the roof, with mosquitoes flying, the ch flying around the chalice and drowning in the chalice, that's the same Eucharist that the Pope will celebrate 
on the high altar in St. Peter's, there is absolutely no difference. The kenosis actually is better understood in the Amazon, maybe, because that's what it's all about. God becoming a man, emptying himself. So let's ask God to help us to remember the essential thing of why we come to Mass on a Sunday. We participate in this incredible mystery that we have to become part of, not just spectators too. We too have to empty ourselves and be Christ-like. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so today, the only day in the year that it happens, the liturgy asks the priest to take off his chasuble. And, just like Jesus, wrapped around his waist, an apron of sorts, and he will wash the feet of the people I spoke to before Mass. Both of their feet, not just one. Sometimes on Monday, Thursday, the priest just washes one foot of each person. But no, Jesus washed both feet. So that's what we'll do. Wash the feet of the 12 people that I spoke to just before Mass.
number 893. Today we don't say the creed, but we stand now for our prayers of the faithful. <coughs> In giving us the sublime gift of the Eucharist, the Lord encourages us to set before him our needs and those of the whole world. We pray that God will help us to empty ourselves and learning from his example, remember to love each other with the perfection he commanded us to do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all the ordained ministers, bishops, priests, and deacons, that they will empty themselves and serve the people of God rejecting all forms of clericalism and self-interest. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray for all migrants and refugees fleeing from persecution, war, and injustice, that they find a warm welcome 
shelter and justice in the countries they arrived to. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that we who claim to follow Christ do all in our power to serve the dignity of all people in our daily lives, remembering that what we do or fail to do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we fail to do for him who gave his life for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray for those who, who are sick and housebound, especially all those in our local community. We ask for God to grant them his peace this holy week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We pray for those who have died recently and whose anniversaries occur at this time. May they rest eternal in the glory of God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We now ask the intercession of Mary, our blessed mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, Muslim women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. We pray in silence now for our own intentions. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and help us to walk faithfully with your Son through this Holy Week. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us now sit for our offertory hymn. Number 538, 538. Thank you. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is a true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, on all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And everybody gathered here tonight, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose mem memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, and Paul, and Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, accept this oblation, out, accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we, be delivered, that we be delivered from eternal loss and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, 
that it be that it spiritual make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved son our lord jesus christ on the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a, with a, serene, and kindly, with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a, spot, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially Mary Bernadette Healy, Marci Marcial and Dorcas de Colsey, and John and Christine Matthias, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So let us stand and together pray the very prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory and the Lord, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion antiphon. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, Almighty God, <clears throat> that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So now, on this special night there's no final blessing today the blessed sacrament is traditionally taken to an altar of repose a monument in this parish it will be our parish room 
and the Blessed Sacrament will stay there until three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That's more or less 18 hours from now. And quite a few of you have committed to a particular hour within those 18 hours. But everybody is invited at some moment to come and spend a moment, if you can, before the Blessed Sacrament. In these days, there are special graces that God wants to give us to the degree that we open our hearts and try to understand a little bit more this mystery that we're celebrating. So if you can, at any moment from now until three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, come. You don't have to spend particularly any length of time, half an hour, an hour, five minutes. The important thing is that you come and watch with me. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. Watch with me, to keep watch. Many of us carry difficulties, problems, doubts, sufferings, pain, traumas, our past. What better night, what better 18 hours to put these before the Lord in silence before the Blessed Sacrament. So because we don't yet have a hall, we will soon, believe me. We're going to not take the Blessed Sacrament immediately to the parish room, otherwise very few people would be able to participate because if we went out the door and processed to the parish room, I don't know how many of you would fit in there, but it's not that many. Most of you would stay outside. So our procession is going to be up the aisle of the church. We're going to go round and we're going to place the Blessed Sacrament on Our Lady's altar. And you're free to stay the amount of time you wish. Once the number has dwindled, whatever time that will be, an hour from now, who knows, I will then, yes, take this Blessed Sacrament, put it in the parish room. It will remain open for those hours until 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and you're free to come and go as you please. Pray for our young people who have decided to come at 2 o'clock in the morning for an hour. Pray they get out of bed to come and that they don't sleep when they're there. Yeah. So let us now begin our procession. I will put on the humeral veil to carry the Blessed Sacrament. The altar servers will now fall into place and the choir will sing Pangilingue, which will conclude with Tanto Mergo. So let us sing. And once we have the Blessed Sacrament here, we can all, those that can, will kneel down once this Blessed Sacrament gets to Our Lady's altar over here. It's number 570. Thank you. 
just one thing I did forget to say. It's the only mass in the year, really, that afterwards everybody tries to go away until they get out of the church um, silently, only so that those people who are going to remain in adoration can do so without being disturbed. So I just ask, as you leave tonight, um, try to keep the noise down until you actually get out of the physical building so that we continue with this um, atmosphere of prayer and silence as we watch with the Lord.